Welcome to Fairy Tale Access, where the head fairy's quest is to prove that fairy tales do exist in actual time rather than once upon a time. Together, we will unravel the heroes, young and old, who turn dreams into reality. These are the people who still believe in happily ever after. The discoveries will bend even our most cynical non-believers into believing in fairy tales. It's a weekend trip to nowhere in particular. As you travel down those not so familiar roads and the scenery flickers in and out like a movie on fast forward, you start to daydream. But if you listen very closely, the landscape will beckon you to unravel its secrets by taking a closer look. How do we know where to start? We'll just know when we get there. And don't be surprised by the change in seasons. It is fairy tale access after all. We're here. And the quest begins. Hi, welcome to the historic village of Mount Vernon. If you're in New England, you're probably used to the Saturday Sunday drive. This is the Mount Vernon General Store where you can warm up with some hot soup and I hear they have fantastic food here. Hi, we're now in the store in the Mount Vernon General Store with proprietor Dan Bellamore. Thank you for having us. Thank you for coming in. Oh, my pleasure. So can you tell us a little bit about Mount Vernon? Well, Mount Vernon, um, has been um, a beautiful place. It did have three um, huge hotels back in the 1800s. Unfortunately, we lost them all to fires. Um, but the wonderful thing that is still here, of course, is Main Street. Um, there are Purgatory Falls right down the road, um, and Lampson Farm, which is one of the original, um, one of the original settlements in Mount Vernon that was left in the town by Mrs. Lamson and that's just down the street so um, they open that up once a year for Lamson Farm Day and um, children can load muzzles, um, milk cows, um, work with the blacksmith, everything that uh, they used to be able to do you know a long long time ago um, and of course the view is beautiful from Grand Hill. Can you tell us about Purgatory Falls? Well, it's, um, it's a spring-fed and um, brook-fed falls, and it's about 18 feet high. Um, and it's just been a destination for a long time. It's one of those hidden little gems in New Hampshire um, that people come from all over to see. Do you know why it's called Purgatory Falls? That I, I don't know. I do know that it is called Mont Vernon, and they're not really sure. There's a couple of stories where it was either a spelling error or um, they just want it to be a little bit different. But that's the only thing I know. I do not know why they call it Purgatory Falls. Mm, hidden mystery. It, it is a hidden mystery. So tell us about some of the wonderful things that you have in your store. I see all the hat boxes. Is this a collection? Or is, do you have artists that contribute work here? Uh, no, what we do is we do gift baskets with all local products. Um, and we custom design whatever you want. Customers either call us or they go on our Facebook page and tell us what they'd like, what color, what kind of products they'd like in it. Um, and then we send a picture back to them. And if they okay, we either ship it out or get it ready for pickup. So we put um, all these gifts, um, instead of a basket, we do hat boxes, tool boxes, um, tins, colanders, mixing bowls. So we just do it up. Um, and it's been very popular. Wow. And do you have a website that they can go to? Our website is under construction, um, but it should be done in a couple of weeks, so we're excited about that. Oh, that's fantastic. What is your number that people could call in? 
Our number is 603-554-1480. Um, Great. Right. Can you give us a little tour of your store and some of the unique things you have here? I can. The store was actually moved here in 1840, and it was originally um, a box company, and then it was a shoe company, and it was dissembled um, from down the street, and it was moved onto this location um, by Mr. Temple and Mr. Blood in 1840. In 1840. Yes, and then it was restored um, about four years ago. Um, it was in disrepair and there were a lot of problems structurally with the building um, and a couple came in and just redid the whole place. Um, so now we're here and we just love it. It's beautiful. So what do you have to show us? What do we have? We have all kinds of treats. We have 20 local vendors from all over New Hampshire. Um, as you can see, we do all kinds of gift baskets. Um, we Everything is baked here fresh from our breads to our pastries. Um, our deli is open um, from 6 in the morning till 2 o'clock in the afternoon, six days a week. Um, so we do a lot of food. And it's a sweet and spicy bourbon barbecue sauce. Is that from New Hampshire? Or? That is not, but we do have um, a lot of products from coffee to chocolates um, to spices, jams, mushrooms. Um, oh, what else? There's a lot. Maple syrup, honey wine, so all kinds of local treats. And what is one of your specialties that people come into or that the locals come in for? I would have to say one of our biggest things that people come in for would be our whoopie pies. Your whoopie pies? Our whoopie pies. I mean, we are known for just making these gigantic whoopie pies from scratch. Um, and we stuff them with um, salted caramel, um, cherries, peanut butter, chocolate chips, white chocolate chips, nuts, all kinds of things. And that's that's big. We do a lot of whoopie pies. Wow. I never thought in my whole life I would bake so many whoopie pies. That's fantastic. They sound delicious. We're, We're going to send you big. back with one. You're going to send me back with <laughs> yeah, one? Yeah, absolutely. Thank you. Try it. Alright, and what about other artists in the Army? You said you had an illustrator. There's Joanne Kitchell, we sell her cards. She's a children's illustrator. Um, Do you have an example of her cards? Her cards are right over here. And we had her books, but they're so popular, they're hard to keep in stock. Oh, wow. Yeah, they fly. So, um, yeah, she has um, three children's books out. Um, we have Paula Pisan, which is a local watercolor artist. Uh, we sell her cards also. Um, in the area, we have um, um, Sylvia Nicholas, and she's a famous um, stained glass and um, bronze sculpture creator. She's just two doors down. Um, we have a lot of artisans here in Mont Vernon. Um, I would say there's probably at least 25 artisans right here in the area. This morning, um, several of the artists were all in um, letting us know about their spring collections that will be coming out. So. Um, in May, there's a spring gala um, here, and people come out from all over the place, and there's a lot of um, activities during spring gala, and all of the artisans get ready to showcase their wares out here in Mount Vernon. So it's exciting. Okay. And is that on the Mount Vernon City website, perhaps? It is, and it's also right down Main Street. So you just come, have fun for the day. You can go for a hike at the falls, see the view at Grand Hill, um, or um, the fishing derby is also the weekend before that, um, and they stock the pond, Carlton Pond, um, and what they do is um, any child from anywhere can come and fish for the day, and they have hot dogs, hamburgers for the kids, um, and they're guaranteed pretty much to catch a fish. Yeah, they really stock that for this event. So it's a, it's a fun town um, with a lot of really nice people. We're lucky to be here. I feel blessed every day to um, come into such a great community. Sounds like it. Well, thank you so much thank for Thank you very tonight. much for coming in. Thank you. My pleasure. And we're going to have to check out Purgatory Falls if it's accessible. By the way, the Whoopie Pies are amazing. Dan gave us a copy of the Historical Society of Mount Vernon's Grand Hotel Season. Written in 1994, it's about Mount Vernon's hotels and the golden days 
1857 to 1933. So I'm going to share a little bit of the story with you to encourage you to come out to Mount Vernon and find out all about the exciting history that we have here. Because like people, towns have their own unique character and Mount Vernon is one of those towns. The Grand Hotel from 1890 to 1930 in this location behind me, you'll see three houses and the tip of the third house over there. Those were the last three cottages behind the Grand Hotel that are left today. But the Grand Hotel was biggest and by far the most imposing of all the Mount Vernon hotels. It was built above the village at the highest point on Prospect Hill, now called Grand Hill. The group of investors included Franklin Kittredge, Frank Martin, William Burnin, John Spaulding, and Clark Campbell. Martin owned the hill. Campbell owned the approach to the hill. So construction of the hotel began in 1890. But on Easter Sunday, March 29, 1891, when the building was nearly finished, it burned of unslackened lime in the basement coming into contact with water was said to be the cause of this fire. The investment group immediately began rebuilding. The second building was rushed to completion and opened for business July 6, 1891. The hotel, as you can see, it towered above and dominated the village, forming a landmark that could see, be seen for many miles around. Unbelievably a great site. It's also a great place to hang out with your family and read about the history. So we're off. Let's see what else we'll discover in Mount Vernon. We're going to take a trip over to Purgatory Falls. Although we haven't found out why it's called that, in the melting of winter, we just might find out why. Ooh, but I stopped at the local library, came up with some amazing leads that got us a little sidetracked. After all, librarians have access to the old and new alike. And our librarian recommended a visit to the local cemetery. I know what you're thinking. Weird. Creepy even. Scary. But really, it can be a beautiful and peaceful place. It's certainly historical, and the tree up ahead that's hollowed out, right next to it is the grave of a gentleman who was killed in a hunting accident in the 1800s. But what's remarkable about his spot is that front of it, this beautiful dog sits and guards him. Momentum mori, Latin for remember, death awaits us all. firehouses. I wanted to share with you that a lot of the hotels in this town burned out because there was no fire department. So they couldn't get here fast enough for Milford and surrounding towns to get up the hill and put the fires out. But an interesting fact is the first motorized firefighting vehicle was a Model T Ford Ton truck. And if you're really into nature and you love the outdoors, you're going to love the views that you find in Mount Vernon, New Hampshire. So we're off to Purgatory Falls to get you a glimpse because if you come in from Purgatory Falls off of Main Street in Mount Vernon, we just found that it's a several mile hike and since there's still a lot of snow around New Hampshire, we're gonna try to go in the other way and see if we can find it and get you a closer view. And you have to imagine, what did it take for early settlers to clear the land to get these kind of incredible views. The views on the way to Purgatory Falls are absolutely stunning. Together, we just might find out what type of place inspired Arnold Bennett to state of all the inhabitants of the Inferno, none but Lucifer knows that hell is hell and the secret function of purgatory 
is to make of heaven an effective reality. And if you love Stonewall, a guy known to friends as Thor, shortened for Thorson, wrote a book on them called Stone by Stone, which is how the world's walls are built. We'll see the alpaca farm on our next trip in episode three. Hi everybody, we finally made it to Purgatory Brook Trails. Now, Purgatory Falls is apparently tucked in between the llama farm where we were and Mount Vernon on the other side. So Mount Vernon on the other side was really hard to get into and it looks like this side is going to be equally hard with all the snow still left. But the scenery is unbelievable, second to none. The mountain ranges, you're gonna love it here. So we're not gonna go into the falls on this trip, but we suggest you get your hiking shoes on, you come up here, you check out Mount Vernon, you see the grand and absolute beautiful views that they have here. Come to Purgatory Falls and find out that it's actually not purgatory at all. With all the woods surrounding it, it looks like they're hiding a little slice of heaven. And that's what all the locals describe it as, something really beautiful. We couldn't bring you to Mount Verdon without coming back to find out a little more about Purgatory Falls. And this is your entrance. Purgatory Brook is a 5.8 mile long trail that flows south over three small waterfalls, intersecting in Milford. For much of its length, it is the border between Lindenburg and Mount Vernon. All right, on the way, we have a choice. Which way do we go? Janet's Trail, which doesn't specify whether it goes to Purgatory Falls or not, or do we follow Purgatory Book Trail? I think I'm gonna follow Purgatory Book Trail, however, I have to cross this cute little bridge to do so. Come on, be careful. Seems pretty sturdy, guys. Um, but here's where your balancing act comes in because one part of the bridge is broken. So maybe we should go through Janet's trail. The Middle Falls can be reached from Lindenboro. Gosh, if it's slick, this is definitely not the bridge to be on. Take Janet's trail to wherever it goes. Oh, the Purgatory Book Trail goes this way, so we're off. Be careful, hiking can be a bit tricky here. So why did they name it Purgatory? No one knows, but let's speculate. The adjective of Purgatory means having the quality of cleansing or purifying because the underworld has penalties but if you can overcome the bad acts with good ones you can escape its fiery depths like the hike to purgatory falls it can be a wee bit tricky the scenes along the way are amazing and as far as purgatory goes, it may have been named for that Darwin thing, the logic of choice, outlined in a chapter of a book called The Nature and Origin of Biological Evolution. It's a tricky balance between positive and negative, which is a natural selection that can be disruptive. You'll find that in the twists and turns of the trail itself. But if you follow the markers, the directional sequence keeps you moving forward, clearing your thoughts, which will bring you to a state of being stabilized in your mind and body. Because exercise is great, but it will also help your mind to make decisions that keep you moving forward. Kunin's Cosmological Mustangs Make the book a good read. Cosmological 
is a branch of philosophy dealing with the origin and general structure of the universe. Not just the parts that deal with elements and laws, but the features of space, time, the relationship between cause and effect, and freedom. So get your hiking shoes on, come out, take a hike, stop in at the general store in Mount Vernon, and you'll have a great time. It's the perfect Saturday or Sunday drive to nowhere. See you soon. Keep asking questions. You never know what you'll find on a Sunday drive. And if you go to Mount Vernon, tell them the head fairy sent you.